for watching Well Traveled Life with Jonathan and Jennifer. We are in the city of Port Lincoln, which is on the southern coast of the state of South Australia on the Eyre Peninsula. Port Lincoln lies on Boston Bay, which is the largest natural harbor in the country. So it provides a fabulous beach area and it also has super access to the Lincoln National Park, which requires reservations to enter as only 15 cars a day are allowed. Known as the seafood capital of the country, there's ample fishing, plenty to do in town and around the region. Uh, Dylan Switzer, so I'm the Economic and Tourism Development Officer at the City of Port Lincoln. So for tourism to Port Lincoln, it's great. We've, um, this is our third ship back to Port Lincoln in post-COVID two and a half years so yeah it's great great for the town passengers getting off and exploring the town so no it's great it's great to have the industry back so we're obviously the seafood capital of the world as much a fishing port as it is a cruise port so when you get off your ship you will immediately see that industry in place lots of boats look for the big tuna boats those go out for three months at a time keep your eye out for marine life as they're hanging out too Right on the pier where your ship docks is the newly erected Red Shed or the Port Lincoln Tourist Center. They have information on site for you to look at. But they also will offer some tours right there from the Red Shed. But if you would like to walk into town, keep walking. There's a designated little trail that will take you off the pier to the beach. Along the boardwalk, bordering the entire cove. And right through the main street of town. I feel like you've just got to try something seafood based. It's so fresh. You, you know, go down to Hotel Boston or Del Giorno's or the fresh fish place um, and just basically purchase something seafood based, whether that's abalone, lobster, oysters, um, whiting, fresh tuna, anything along those lines. It's um, yeah, definitely in the right town for it. Town offers shopping, cafes, bars, there's hotels, and of course this is where you're going to go get your oysters. As Dylan told us, you can stop at any of the restaurants he mentioned. also really impressed with the art that was placed throughout the city and along the boardwalk. The statues clearly indicate the nation's history and pride, everything from fishermen to racehorses. But there were also some really beautiful installations of indigenous art, as well as a really moving piece that made me connect the movement of water to the ripples in life and the way that we all are connected and affect each other. I don't know if this installation was particular to the Christmas holiday, but I loved it and had so much fun with locals and tourists alike who chose to pose in and with it. I think I lean towards hope. I certainly hold out hope. But in the end, I probably pick joy. Port Lincoln has more billionaires per capita than anywhere in the world, but you would never know it to be there. It is a laid back, comfortable city. I was so impressed by the amount of fun I saw people having. There were kayakers, there were kids playing games in playgrounds, there were families 
at the beach. A raucous game of bubble soccer was happening in the commons area. boating. It just was an all-around great recreational city. Easily walkable and just a really nice place to spend a day. Yeah, so the Air Peninsula is quite a big place, so Port Lincoln's just a small part of that. So definitely when you come back, come back for a week or so and explore, explore the Southern Air Peninsula. You've got oysters in Coffin Bay, which is 30 minutes away, uh, Streaky Bay up the coast, three hours away, amazing coastline, uh, amazing accommodation. We have some eco, eco accommodation, which is, you know, middle of nowhere, you've basically got it to yourself. Or, you know, your caravan parks, your five-star hotels, so yeah. We've got it all for that side of things, and we definitely encourage people to come back longer. I think cruise is a snippet of what, what's to offer, and it's a matter of, um, yeah, when you return travels, come out and explore the region. The Air Peninsula is this triangular peninsular stretch, and it's bounded by the Spencer Gulf on the east, the stony hills of the Aboriginal territorial land of the Gali Range lie to the north, and then on the west, you have the Great Australian Bight. It was named after Edward John Eyre, who was an English explorer on the continent of Australia and also the governor of Jamaica. But what it's really known for is the seafood, wine, wildlife, and its world famous oysters. So people come over, they do different tours, like swim with the sea lions, oyster tours, tours of the museum, they jump on the hop on hop on bus, go to Peter Tegel Winery, the Lincoln Hotel, so well, different things to do. But yeah, a lot of people come here and um, taste our fresh local seafood. It seems to be a popular one. Much of life happens on the water here, whether it's stand-up paddle boarding, kayaking, sailing, sport fishing, harvesting oysters, playing with sea lions, or shark cage diving. The water and what swims in it is where it's at in the Air Peninsula. Pretty much, yep. Yeah. Eat and drink. <laughs> no worries. Thanks. Thanks to the fishermen and Dylan who greeted us in Port Lincoln, some of our favorite crew members that we met in the city, and to the kids who sent us on our way as we left. Enjoy visiting Port Lincoln and follow us as we continue our journey around Australia. We think you'd also enjoy our video from Adelaide and the Fluria Peninsula in South Australia. <laughs>